The following is a message from the pulpit of the Bible Baptist Church of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, led by Pastor Philip Blackwell. It is our desire that God would use this message to be a help and a blessing to you. If you're looking for a traditional church where Christ is preeminent and the membership is family, we invite you to come and be our guest. Now may God bless you as you listen. You're already standing, so I don't want to make you sit down and then stand up again. It'd be kind of like children's church. How many of you remember the, the different songs? There was a wise old king. He had 10,000 men. He marched them up the top of the hill. And he marched them down again. You're, I'm not trying to do that with you tonight, so I'll let you remain standing uh, for the reading of the Word of God. Proverbs 29 is where we find ourselves tonight. Proverbs 29. I believe I'll be preaching tonight on a very important subject uh, I think that we all need. Every person in this room, no matter your age, I believe this message is applicable uh, to you and to your life. Proverbs 29 and jump down to verse number 25. Very familiar verse of scripture. Uh, the Bible says at the very beginning of verse number 25, it says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso put his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Will you read it out loud with me? We'll pause at the comma. Uh, ready? The Bible says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. In verse 25, you find the phrase, a snare. And tonight I'm going to be preaching along this thought, word to the wise concerning snares in life. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the truths that we'll be looking at tonight. Lord, I know that the devil is always looking for an avenue. He's always looking for an entrance by which he can get into our lives. And Lord, destroy it. And many times uh, we step into snares ourselves. And oftentimes we even cause our own snares by which we fall. Oftentimes the devil is nowhere around the falling uh, that many of God's people do. And so Lord, tonight I pray that as we try to illuminate our hearts and minds on this thought of snares, God, I pray we would listen intently. And Lord, more than listen intently, I pray that we would put these truths within our hearts and God, that we would take them home with us. Lord, that while we're going through our week, we will be aware of the different types of snares that come in life. Now, Father, be with us tonight. God, I pray you would help. Lord, I pray as well that you put a hedge of protection about this place. And God, I pray you'd have a hedge of protection about every believer. And Lord, I pray that we'd see you to continue to do the great works that you've been doing. Now, Lord, when the invitation time is given. I pray that you will have dealt with hearts. And God, I pray people to be careful to respond. Be with us now and help us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated tonight. A fly will land on a sundry plant and that fly will begin to enjoy its tasty, sticky leaves. And while it enjoys that tasty treat, it does not even notice that the leaves from that Venus flytrap begins to close up until it's too late. There's a fly. The fly is going about its normal business, its normal day. It finds something that's very sweet and it begins to eat. And it doesn't realize that that thing in which is sweet for the moment is going to cause its demise. You know, that happens in a lot of Christians' lives. Oftentimes we are trying to serve the Lord and we're trying to live for Jesus and we're trying to walk by faith and do those things that would please the Lord. And how many times as we're walking and trying to please God do we wind up stepping into a snare and wind up being injured and hurt because of it? You have probably met many Christians who will testify that they've been hurt. Whether they've been hurt by a church or they've been hurt by a family member or they've been hurt by dumb decisions that they have made. But the fact of the matter is this, no matter where we look, we can see that uh, snares are all around us as the saints of God and the devil is trying to destroy our lives. But here's what I found. Oftentimes it's not the trap that the devil uh, uh, sets. It's not the snare that Satan himself puts before us. Oftentimes the snares that we fall into and we're injured by is of our own making. 
We set uh, traps for ourselves and we don't even realize it. Now the wise man Solomon in the book of Proverbs, he speaks about this subject of snares many times. And what you'll find as you look at this subject of snares, uh, he's going to reveal to us three things. Number one, he's going to show us what will snare us. What is it that will snare us? Number two, he is going to tell us uh, there in the book of Proverbs who are the people that are easily snared. And number three, he's going to reveal to us in the Bible how may each of us keep away from the snares in which are said. And so, very important message tonight, and I think it'll be a help to you. So let's get right into the message. Number one, what will snare you? What is it that will ensnare your life? Well, Solomon gives us several things, and we'll look at them. Number one, the first thing that will ensnare the life of a Christian is unwise partners. Go to Proverbs chapter number 6. Proverbs chapter number 6. Unwise partnerships. In Proverbs chapter 6, you'll find a snare that's being mentioned here. And these are some of the snares that are set for us. And we set it ourselves. It's unwise partnerships. Look there in chapter 6 of Proverbs and verse number 1 and verse number 2. The Bible says, My son... If thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with the stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. So in verses 1 and 2, it's talking about being a surety. In our day, we would call it like co-signing. What it is, it's entering in together in an agreement with one person that you're going to take care of a bill if one is unable to pay it. Now let me say, there is nothing, the Bible does not tell us that it is a sin for us to co-sign. It is warning us that being a co-signer, being a surety for someone could lead to a trap in our life. Meaning this, someone can that we have helped and we have signed a document saying that we would pay the note if they could not, well, if they default on the loan, guess who's going to get a bill in the mail? It's going to be that co-signer. And I'm just, like I said, I'm not against co-signing. I know that uh, when my children get old enough to begin to make purchases, I'm going to co-sign for them. They are my children. I think I will, and there's nothing wrong with that. But there is a warning here. Sometimes uh, we enter into a partnership with folks, and it winds up being a snare to us. Matter of fact, the Bible says in verse number 2, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. And so whenever we enter into an unwise partnership, I'm talking about we haven't looked at the situation and meted it out. We haven't intellectually observed what's going on and come up with a genuine plan that will work. What I'm saying is this. Entering into that partnership may wind up snaring us and hurting us in the future. And what I'm saying tonight is this. This is a something that most Christians will do out of the uh, goodness of their heart because they love someone and they're trying to be a help. But I'm telling you tonight... Be weary of doing that too much. Be weary of entering into a financial partnership like this uh, because it might be unwise and it might be your demise. It might wind up costing you more than you ever expected that you were going to pay. What does it cost? Well, it could cost you financially, but number two, it could cost you a friendship. It could cost you a relationship that you have had. How many uh, people in this room, don't raise your hand, but know of someone that entered into a partnership with one of their closest friends, but by the end of that partnership, by the time uh, everything went down, that friendship, not just the partnership, but that friendship was torn asunder, and those uh, men are no longer friends. Now they're enemies. You know why? They entered into a relationship. It was an unwise partnership. And let me say tonight, we ought to be careful about the partnerships that we enter into. We must be careful about the friends that we make. We must be careful about the partnerships we enter into. Because if we enter into the wrong partnership, then it could be a snare that the devil is going to use to destroy our life. Not only do we find that a snare uh, comes from an unwise partnership, but number two, we find as well that it also comes from unchaste relationships. Look there in Proverbs 7. We're not going to read the whole chapter. Proverbs 7 is very descriptive, and I'm not going to read the whole proverb, but what it's dealing with 
is with an ungodly relationship between a man and a woman. It's an adulterous relationship. It's ungodliness. It's sin. It's an unchaste relationship. And notice what the Bible says when it go, when you get down to verse number 22. What the Bible says about the man that enters into an unchaste relationship. What is an unchaste relationship? It's a relationship that is not uh, based on the Word of God. It's one that's outside of the bounds of marriage. And what we find here is that unchaste relationship. Look what the Bible says in verse number 22. The Bible says, He, that is the man, that is going after a married woman, it says, He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, and as a fool to correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. And so here we find a, a man who's going after another man's wife. And what we find is this unchaste relationship is going to be his undoing. And listen, I'm not going to be graphic tonight, but I really believe that the greatest, one of the greatest harms that's in our churches today is men whose eyes have not been looking at the right things, men who have been going astray, maybe not physically, but mentally, and it's entering into the church houses all around America today. And I'm telling you, it is a dangerous thing. Men, we need to be careful about that. We need to guard our hearts. We need to guard our eyes. And we need not be lured astray by those kinds of things. And what we find here in Proverbs 22 is one who's been lured away. One whose eye is not on the right thing. One who enters in to a relationship that will not please the Lord. And the Bible says that that is going to cause a dart to stick to, uh, through his liver. But also it's like a bird hastening to the snare. Listen, there's a lot of men that winds up ensnared because of this issue. And friends, we've got to be careful about this. Now, this is not a, a, something that I'd like to stay on for a long time in mixed company. But listen, now it's just as bad for the women as it is for the men. Statistics have proven that women are now doing uh, things like that that they ought not do just as much now as the men are. That's statistics. And what I'm saying is this, we have to be careful that we don't enter into an unchaste relationship. The Bible says if a man looketh on a woman to lust after her, he's committed adultery in his heart already with her. And so what I'm saying is this, we must be careful because unchaste relationships uh, will be our ruin. Next. The next snare we find that Solomon gives us is not just unchaste relationships and not just unwise partnerships, but number three, unrighteous friendships. Look in Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Have you noticed so far these snares are not a what? It's a who. Have you noticed that? So far as we're looking, the three we've just shown you in the Bible, it's not about a what. It's about a who. It's about a person. And I'm going to tell you, if we're not careful, uh, we're going to let people in, uh, cause us to be ensnared. So notice in Proverbs 22, in verse 24 and 25, that we are warned here about unrighteous friendships. Look there in Proverbs 22, and are you there? Verse number 24. The Bible says, Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go. And so here the Bible gives a command. It says, don't make a friendship with someone who is angry. And listen, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a friend that has lost his temper. That's the dumbest thing in the world. That's not what uh, he's talking about. When the Bible's talking about an angry man, it's one who is angry all the time. Where it is a lifestyle. There's always anger coming from a heart. I'm talking about a spirit, a mentality. And that's what this verses dealing with. It's not talking about maybe uh, your friend that lost his temper one time or two times and you got to get away from him as fast as you can. That's not what this verse is dealing with. It's dealing with a way of life. It's dealing with a mentality. Have you ever been around someone that's easily angered? I'm talking about easily angered. And sometimes they're angry over nothing. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says we're not to have a friendship with that kind of man. You, some of you may be thinking, well, I'm that kind of man. Well, you need to fix that. You need to change you. 
If you're the kind of person that gets angry over nothing and you're the one that has an angry lifestyle, you need to begin to work on your own heart. And by the way, that's not going to be taken care of in a month. It won't even be taken care of in a year. It's going to take you years of retraining your thoughts and your life uh, so that you can have a right spirit. It's not something that's taken care of easily because it's so ingrained in a person. But the Bible tells us here that we're not to make a friendship with an angry man. But look in verse number, as we continue reading. It says, with a furious man, thou shalt not go. Don't hang out with those that are furious all the time. You know, some people just like to fight. You know, one of the qualifications of a pastor is that he's not a brawler. You know what that means? That doesn't mean that he doesn't stand for truth. That just means he doesn't like to fight. He's not always looking for a fight. And you know, that's, a, that's something that should be in all of our hearts where we're not always reading into everything and causing a fight. We ought not be those kind of people. We ought not be furious. We ought not have that kind of spirit. And we shouldn't hang out with those that do. Why? Well, look what the verse continues to say. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. You notice this, that not only does hanging around the wrong crowd and an angry person affect you, it also infects you. If you hang around someone that has this kind of spirit, here's what's going to happen to you. You're going to begin to have that kind of spirit yourself. And by the way, if you're struggling with this, where you have an angry spirit, you need to look around and see who you're hanging around with, and they may have an angry spirit, and you might need to withdraw yourself from them so that you can get a hold of yourself. But the Bible says that those who make a friendship with an angry man and go with a furious man, notice, is going to learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. I'm going to tell you, anger sure has ruined a whole lot of lives. There's people that are sitting in penitentiaries that they're there because at one moment in time, they lost their cool. I've been with the Rock of Ages several times, and we've gone into several prisons, and I've talked to several inmates, witnessed to them and everything like that. And I can't tell you, there's a lot of people who were saved before they were in there that's in prison. I'm talking about Christians in prison that were saved uh, before they went to prison. That was in a good church. I, there was one that I ran into down in Montgomery and I was talking to him. He was the son of a preacher. He was in his 20s now. And here's what he said. He said, at one moment in time, I lost my cool. When I did, I took a life and now I'm here in jail. One moment in time, he lost his cool. And he took a life, unintentionally by the way, when he hit the man, he didn't mean for the man to fall and hit his head and break his neck. He didn't mean for that to happen. He lost his cool. He reacted in anger, and it cost a man his life. And here's a Christian man that's in prison, a son of a pastor that was in a good Bible-believing church. He's in prison now because of one moment of anger. Don't think that anger is not a big deal. It is a big deal. It's ruined lives. It's ruined marriages. And by the way, it's also ruined churches. So we have to make sure that we, are have, that we have the right spirit. And matter of fact, we ought not be around those that have an angry spirit about it. So notice it's an unrighteous friendship with the angry. But notice also, it's also an, un, uh, an unrighteous friendship with the scornful. Go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. <coughs> Excuse me. Proverbs 29. And jump down, if you will, to verse number 8. The Bible says, Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. Scornful person. Person that has a heart, not just of anger, but a heart that's willing to stir things up and to scorn people. I'm talking about a spirit. And friend, the Bible says that we are not to be, uh, we're not to be in fellowship with those kind of men. Matter of fact, the Bible says in verse number 8 that scornful men brings a city into a snare. You let scornful men uh, get in the military and leadership. You let scornful men lead a country. You let a scornful man pastor a church. You know what you're going to find? You're going to find destruction all around. You know why? Because a scornful man, all he'll do is set snares because of his wrath, but the Bible says a wise me, but wise men turn away wrath. Have you ever had somebody scorn you? 
somebody hurts you and maybe you're trying to fix the relationship and they just add gasoline to it. That's a scorner. That's a person with that kind of spirit that we're talking about. And what the Bible teaches is that, listen, that scornful spirit brings a whole city into a snare. How much more does it bring a home into a snare, a country into a snare, and also uh, churches into a snare as well? So notice unrighteous friendships. Next, number four. The Bible even tells us here in Proverbs number four that we find a snare when there's unfulfilled stewardships. Look in Proverbs chapter 20, please. This was a verse, honestly, that I had to think about for a while because I didn't understand what it was saying. But as I was looking at it and running some cross-references, I have a good interpretation, I believe, of what this verse is talking about. Proverbs 20, and look at verse number 25. Proverbs 20 and verse number 25. The Bible says, It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy, and after vows to make an inquiry. So notice it's a snare to man who devoureth that which is holy, and after vows to make an inquiry. You know what this is dealing with? It's dealing with holy things. It's dealing with things that is given to the Lord. It's dealing with things that are of a sacred use. And the Bible says there in verse uh, number 25, it's a snare to a man that devour these holy things, if you will. It's a, a snare to one that will take the holy things of God and basically walk upon them. It's a snare unto them. You know, there are many verses in the Bible that we can go to, but do you realize that God has given us many holy and good things in our lives? You know, marriage is not a good idea. It's God's idea. You know, there are people that, that walk upon that holy ordinance and, and men that will walk out of a relationship or women that will walk out with, with no and, and they think that there will be no repercussions from that. But the Bible tells us here that the man who devoureth that which is holy, that man is going to find himself in a snare. He's going to find himself in a hard place, in a situation that he may not be able to get out of. Think about uh, the vows that we make. And by the way, we ought to be careful about vowing vows. We ought to be wise about what we tell the Lord we are going to do and what we're not going to do. We ought to be wise about that. Because you look here in verse number 25, it says, And after vows to make inquiry. That means that after you said you're going to do something and told the Lord you're going to do something, then you'd begin to think about it and say, Hey, that might have not have been, that may be something I can't fulfill. Hey, we've got to be careful about these things. See, unfulfilled stewardship. Hey, that's uh, these uh, holy things and, and these this uh, thought of unfulfilled stewardship. It speaks of that which is separated to sacred uses that is devoted to the Lord as first fruits. It can include tithes. It can include our ordinances. Hey, it can even include our church. All these different things are things for the sacred use of God. And we've got to be careful that we're not devouring them, that we're not destroying them, that we're we're not walking over them. I'm talking about unfulfilled stewardships in our lives. Number two, we see number one, what will snare you? And I gave you the examples here in Proverbs. By the way, if you take your Bible and you look up snares and go through the entirety of the Bible, there's much more than these things, much more. But for our study, since we're in the book of Proverbs, that's all we'll look at. Number two, who will be easily snared? Who is it that will find themselves in a snare? We'll go to Proverbs 29 and verse number 5. We find, first of all, those who are flattered will find themselves in a snare. Those who are flattered. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 29 and verse number 25. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 and verse 5, A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. You know, if you're easily flattered by the words of men, I'm talking about people can tell you how wonderful you are and it goes to your head. You know what? You're the one that's going to be easily picked off. In Bible college, I don't know why they made us read the book, but they made us read a book by Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. We had to read that stinking book. That is a thick, little, boring book. I hated everything about that book. But what you find in that book about winning friends and influencing people, you know what it is? It's flattering people. 
It's building them up and giving them a false sense of how wonderful you think they are so that you can get your way. Listen, that's not godly and that's not right. You don't, you don't tell people things that's untrue about themselves to build them up so you can rip them off. That's what that whole book is about, about building people up so you can rip them off. And the fact is simply this, as a Christian, as a believer, we need to be weary of people that's always flattering. A flattering tongue is a dangerous thing. Let me put it this way. You're not as good as people tell you you are. But let me say this as well. You're not as bad as people say you are. And you know what is the truth with me as well? And if oftentimes if we allow people to their compliments to go to our head and we begin to think more of ourselves than what we really are, you know what's happening? There is a net, a snare that's being put before our feet. And if we're not careful, we're going to fall into it. Next, we find the flattered. But number two, the next person that's easily ensnared is the fiendish. Look in uh, Proverbs 29 and verse 6. The fiendish. The Bible says here in Proverbs 29 and verse 6, it says, In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous does sing and rejoice. So notice, the righteous, the godly man, he is going to sing and rejoice, but the Bible tells us here in verse number 6 that in the transgression of an evil man there is a snare. Listen, folks that don't love God, not walking with God, you know what they're putting before them with every step? They're putting a snare. If you don't love God tonight, I'm telling you, you're going to wind up hurting yourself and everyone that is around you. Hey, if you have an evil heart tonight, I'm talking about where your transgression. You say, what is a transgression? That's a very specific word in the Bible. Well, we know what, what trans means. It means to go. But when the Bible says transgress, it means this. It means to willingly step over a line means that God has drawn a line in the sand and said, don't step over that. When we transgress that law, here's what we do. We step over the line that God has set and we do it willingly. That is what a transgression is. It's when we step over God's line that he's drawn, step over God's rules or what God said in his word. We willingly step over that line. And according to the Bible, when we step over the lines that God has set, the Bible says that we're going to step into a snare. One thing about this you need to understand is that the rules and the things that God lays out for us in the Bible is not so that you cannot have any fun. You know why God says thou shalt not? It's to keep you safe. God set up a boundary around your life. What is the boundary? It's God's word. We find out what God says we ought to do. We find out what God says we ought not to do. And when we step outside of this umbrella of protection, you know what we're doing? We're stepping into a snare, and oftentimes we do that willingly. So as a Christian, what are we to do? Well, we're to find out what God says and we're to live by what the Lord says and understand that we're to stay inside the line. Notice the fiendish. Next, we find the next person is the fearful. Look in Proverbs 29. You're there already. Jump down to verse number 25. The fearful. The Bible says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Man, I love the second part of this verse. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Hey, there is safety with the Lord. What a blessing that is tonight. Are you, do you feel like you're in danger tonight? You can run to the Lord and you can find a place of safety if you'll put your trust in Him. Hey, if you're not, tonight you're not saved, you're on your way to hell, you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you'll find a place of safety from hell. And what a blessing that is. But you know what? There are other, things, other times in our lives where we feel unsafe. So you know what we need to do? We need to commit our way and trust in the Lord. And then the Bible says, if we do that, we shall be saved. That means this, that God will not allow anything to enter into your life that he hasn't appointed. What an amazing thought that is. God won't allow anything into your life that he hasn't appointed. What a blessing that is. Now, notice what it says at the beginning of the verse, though, and I don't like this part because I think we've all been here. Proverbs 29, 25, it says, The fear of man bringeth a snare. You say, what does that verse mean? Well, it's kind of like this. You're on the job. You don't want to tell anybody you're a Christian because you're worried about what your co-worker might say to you. You know what that is? Fear of a snare. 
Maybe you've got that friend that you know you need to witness to, but you won't witness to them because you're worried what they'll think about you after you do. You know what that is? That's fear of man. And that's going to bring a snare. Maybe it's you're not willing to go and knock on doors because you don't like rejection and you fear what people might say to you. Hey, the Bible says the fear of man bringeth a snare. And listen, friend, that is the truth. If you're afraid of men, you're going to capitulate. You're going to do whatever men would have you to do and you're going to displease the Lord and you're setting a snare for your own self. Hey, we've got to walk with the Lord. We've got to trust in the Lord. I found this. Whenever we have fear, if we'll just step out and trust in the Lord... You know what will happen even though we're still afraid while we're doing it? God will bring us through it. And when we get done, we'll be rejoicing over that, that God gave us the strength to do that which we were afraid of. Hey, God has the ability to do that. We have no need of the fear of man because when we put our trust in the Lord, we'll be saved. Hey, God will take care of us. We can walk with the Lord and we can, be, uh, we can have joy in our lives and we need not fear men. You know why? Because the fear of men bringeth a snare. But whoso trusts in the Lord shall be saved. Who is it that's easily susceptible to snares? Well, we see the fiendish, the fearful. We see the flattered. But notice as well in chapter 18 and verse 7, the foolish. Chapter 18 and verse 7. Chapter 18 and verse 7. There's a lot that this, uh, this chapter uh, speaks of concerning a fool. But we're just going to look at verse number 7. The Bible says, A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Boy, what a descriptive, descriptive thing. Here we find that a fool, what is a fool? The Bible says, A fool uttereth all his mind. You know what a fool is? It's somebody that thinks they know everything about everything, but when they speak, you realize they know nothing about anything. So here's a foolish man. He's uttering all of his mind. And the Bible says that a fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Has somebody ever told you they know how to do something, and you work with them just for a little while, and you realize they, they don't know how to do this? I think we've all been there. I think we've all been around folks that, that, that have bragged about everything they can do. And, and then when you start working with them, you realize, hey, they don't know what they're doing. You know, that, that's a foolish person. But I want to tell you, sometimes our foolish, the foolishness of our mouth puts us in a situation that not only might endanger our physical body, but could endanger our walk with Christ. And so it's important for a Christian to make sure that they're not foolish in the way that they speak and what they say because their lips are a snare of their soul. Let me give you the next, the froward. We're talking about people that are easily susceptible to snares in life, the froward. Look in Proverbs 22 and verse number 5. 22 and verse number 5, the froward. Now, let me give you the definition of a froward person before we actually look at the verse so you can understand it. Froward means this, not willing to yield or comply with what is required. It's unyielding, it's ungovernable, it's refractory, it's disobedient, it's peevish as a froward child. You ever had tell, told somebody that they're hard-headed? You're hard-headed. You know what that is? That's a froward spirit. Not willing to listen. Not willing to uh, yield or comply with what is required. That is a froward person. Now let's look at what Proverbs 22 and verse 5 says with that definition in mind. It says, thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. You ever heard someone say it's like beating your head up against a wall? That's what a froward person does. They're beating their head up against the wall and they're expecting one day to break through, but they're not going to break through. The Bible says, Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. So, 
Those that will not listen and will not yield to the will of God, they will not yield to authority in their life. They're those that are ungovernable, those that will not do that which is required. The Bible says that they are froward, and here's what's going to happen. Thorns and snares are going to be in their way. That means this, that every place they go, every way they go, here's what they're going to find. They're going to find a snare. They're going to find a trap. They're going to find something that's going to hurt them. They're going to find something that is going to maybe even destroy them. That thorn is something that hurts, but a snare, you know what the purpose of a snare is? It's to catch and to kill. That's the purpose of a snare. And so there are a lot of people that get hurt because of a hard-headed spirit, but there's some that even uh, wind up losing their life because they're hard-headed. See, God wants us to yield to comply with what is required. You know, God is not an unreasonable God. He's not. Sometimes Christians begin to think that God is very unreasonable. You know what uh, Romans 12, 1 says? I'll read it to you. You know what it says. But let me, let me help you. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, except one to God, which is your reasonable service. You know, it's only reasonable for a Christian to live their lives by what God said. You know why it's reasonable? Because Jesus came to this earth. He took our sin upon himself. He died on that cross shedding his blood. So it's only reasonable for us to serve him and want to please him and follow his will. It's only, it's only a reasonable thing. Hey, God is not asking us to do some unreasonable thing. Hey, the gods of the heathen ask unreasonable things. What about the God of Islam? What about the Muslim God, the little G God of the Muslims? What does he ask his followers to do? To blow themselves up. God doesn't ask us to do stuff like that. You know what God wants us to do? Present ourselves a living sacrifice and be willing to do what God is, what he has told us to do in his word. Hey, he wants us to yield or to comply with what he says. But if we don't, we're going to find thorns and snares in our way. You know, life is easier. When you follow the instruction book. How many of you men are like me? You don't use instruction manuals. And how many of you being like me have to stop because you've made a mess. And say, honey, can you look at this? And she pulls out an instruction manual and puts it together. Yeah. How many times have we done that? Oh, I know how to do that. I don't need that manual. I don't need that. And then we get in the middle of it and we're frustrated and flustered and we're ready to take a hammer and break that credenza or whatever it is we just bought. We're ready just to smash it into pieces, right? And then the wife comes. She picks up that little instruction manual. By the way, those stupid instruction manuals, they're written in Korean, Japanese, and by the time you get to the end of it, you finally find English so you can figure out what you're doing. I hate those things. But how many times do we not look at the manual? And we wind up making a mess. You know, that's how life is. God's given us a manual. And if we just read God's manual. I've heard people say, well, there's no instructions for life. Yes, there is. I've heard people say there's no instruction manual for living in life and raising children. Yes, there is. It's the Bible. The problem is we don't look and see what God says. We're, we're always better off to find what God says and follow it than we are to be froward in our spirit and go our own way. I'm talking about the folks that are easily susceptible to snares in life. Now let me give you number three, and this is where I was wanting to go. How may we keep from snares? All right, we saw in the Word of God, number one, we saw what will snare us. Number two, we saw who will easily be snared. But number three, how may we keep from snares? How can we keep from being ensnared? Well, these are two things, but honestly, they're really lumped into one thing. I'll show them both to you, and then I'll make an application, and we'll be done. Look in Proverbs 13 and verse 14. How may you and I keep from snares? I've been mentioning it throughout the entirety of the message, if you hadn't noticed. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 13 and verse number 14. The Bible says this, the law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. So what will help us depart from snares? 
the law of the wise. Okay? Now go to Proverbs 14 and look at verse number 27. Proverbs 14 and verse 27. The Bible says this. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Notice, almost the exact same phrase, but instead of saying the law of the wise, it speaks of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of what? Death. So how do we keep from these snares that will destroy our spiritual life and could destroy our physical life? Well, notice that we have got to submit to the law of the wise. Now, what is the law of the wise? It's the word of God. Now, how are you going to submit to the law of the wise? Well, we find it in Proverbs 14, 27, the fear of the Lord. You know what draws us to the law of the wise, the word of God? It's our fear of the Lord. This is one and the same thing. Our fear of God drives us uh, to obeying and submitting ourselves to God's instruction manual. Hey, to God's flashlight, if you will, that will light up our way and that will show us uh, dangers in life. Hey, the law of the Lord, we find all through the scripture. The Bible talks about it being perfect. We find it being true. And we all would agree to that tonight. But why do we cast away the law of the Lord? Why do we cast away the word of God and try to live on our terms if we understand that it's right? And that it is a light. It lights up our path, the Bible says. It lights up our way. That's what the Bible does. And and why do we cast it aside and and wind up hurting ourselves? It's because we don't fear the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 1 verse 7, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs 15 33, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, but and before honor is humility. Proverbs 19 23 says, The fear of the Lord tendeth the life, and he that hath it... Uh, shall abide satisfied, he shall not be visited with evil. Hey, I want to tell you something. God has given us a wonderful book. Wonderful book. There's so much that we find in the pages of God's word that would keep us safe if we'd only do what God said. But here's our problem. Well, I don't know that verse is in the Bible, so how can I follow it, right? I didn't know that was in the Bible. You know, I I remember when I was first saved, my family did not go to church. We never went to church. We didn't go on Christmas. We didn't go on Easter. We didn't go on Mother's Day. We never went to church. My family was an unchristian family. We didn't do church. We just didn't. After I got saved, I remember sitting and hearing my pastor preach. And I cannot tell you how many times in my little mind I would think, I didn't know that was in the Bible. I didn't know that was there. And I was amazed at all the things that he would bring out from the word of God. And I would think, I didn't know that was in the Bible. Here's what I found. The more I read the Bible, the more I learn of God's word, the safer my life is going to be. Hey, I'm telling you, the devil will set some snares. But honestly, most of the snares and pits that we fall into are pits that we've made ourselves. We've ensnared ourselves. And as Christians, we need to get back simply to fearing the Lord and then following the law of the wise. If we do that, then we'll be safe. Let's stand tonight. Lord, we love you. And uh, God, I do thank you for this opportunity to uh, bring this truth. Lord, I know it was kind of teaching, but Lord, I know that it was preaching too. And But Lord, I know that your word is a fire. I know it works in our hearts. And Lord, I pray that you would have spoken to us tonight. God, we sure need you. Lord, it's not in man your word says to direct us. It's not in us. Lord, it's not in us. We don't have wisdom enough. We don't have knowledge enough. We don't have ability. Lord, we don't have the things that we need. But God, we do have your word. And Lord, if we just simply submit to it, what you could do in our lives and through our lives, and God, how you could keep us safe from all the snares that are around us. God, help us tonight. Help us draw closer to you. We pray in Jesus. Thank you for listening to this message today. It is our prayer that this sermon fed your soul, lifted your spirit, and encouraged you in your walk with God. And as we conclude, please remember, there's always a place for you at Bible Baptist Church.